I guess we'll get going and coach you there. I'm here. Okay, there we go. Welcome to Inside the Cave. Today's broadcast sponsor is Bears elite partner, Great Southern Bank. Great Southern Bank, the bank that backs the Bears. Today's guest is Missouri State women's basketball head coach, Amaka Agugwa Hamilton. Coach Mox, how you doing? I'm doing great, and I see we got the same shirt on. Both got yes. our regular season <laughs> conference championship shirts. That's awesome. Think yes. alike still, Tom. Great minds think alike, Coach. Hey, how you doing anyway? I'm doing well. I'm doing well as, as well as anybody can be, do, can be doing during this pandemic. You know, I just really hope everybody's staying healthy and safe. Um, you know, obviously this is our new normal for now, working from home. But, um, you know, I, we get to hug up and kiss up on our loved ones and spend some more time at home, but obviously still get some work done. So trying to do the best I can, just like everybody else. You talked about uh, the work being done. Um, what What is going on with you and the staff as far as communication and the work that you're able to do right now? Yeah, I mean, well, you know, this is a great, uh, you know, uh, I guess the technology piece that we're using here with Zoom. And we use that with our staff as well and our players. Uh, so right now I'm just doing a lot of the end of the year. Um, I call them IPR, Individual Performance Review Meetings um, with our staff, just so that, you know, we can continue to get better together. And then also, you know, just review the year, anything we need to change, work on, um, you know, just continue to grow as a staff. So we're doing that this week. Next week I'll do the ones with the players. Um, where we just talk about, you know, the review of the season and just where I thought they were great, where I thought we could be better, things to work on in the off season, all that stuff. But um, now that school's back in session as of this past Monday, you know, we're, we're just checking in with our players, um, academically especially, just making sure that, you know, everybody's getting used to the online courses and they have any questions, you know, just kind of checking in with them, making sure that everything's going smoothly. But um, you know, we let them, I was talking to them a little bit via FaceTime, things like that, you know, for the first two weeks after the season, but we kind of let them two, three weeks, I guess you could say, let them enjoy their spring break and be at home with their families. But now that school's back in session, we're in constant communication for sure. One good thing. I mean, over the years, communication has changed. Technology has changed. So it is easier to keep track of everybody. You guys have kind of a group messaging system you use, right? Yeah, for sure. We've always had a group messaging system, but Zoom allows us to meet, you know, as a team, almost like if we were in person um, and you can see everybody and everybody can contribute. So that's a pretty cool uh, platform, I guess, to use. But at the same time, it's not like you're in person where you can, you know, give somebody a hug and be able to talk face to face. I mean, it's good you can see their face through the computer or the, through your uh, telephone, but I still like that in-person contact. So it's a little different, but you got to make, you know, kind of roll with the punches and make do with what you have. And that's what we're doing. Today's broadcast sponsor is Bears elite partner, Great Southern Bank. We'd also like to thank the Doubletree by Hilton Springfield, located at Glenstone and Kearney, where a warm cookie always awaits your arrival. Sure missiles, coaches shows, coach. We had a lot of fun at uh, the Doubletree. And, uh, and man, that was a great time. Great fans, uh, great crowds there. It was. It was a good time every Monday. And you know, I really appreciated everybody that came out. I thought throughout the course of the year, the fan base just grew every every week in that, um, you know, in the radio show. And I just really appreciate it. It was awesome. I mean, I think our fan base was growing throughout the course of the year, even in our attendance at games and even just speaking engagements that I was doing or events we were holding. So uh, Lady Bear Nation continued to show up and show out. So I do miss that. You know, you're kind of isolated. We're all at home and, you know, you don't have a lot of contact with just the community and um, you know, even just outside of our program. So I miss all of that. But in due time, we'll be back. You know, it's been three weeks exactly since we left Moline. It was uh, the Friday morning. So tomorrow would be three weeks exactly. Uh, what, a, what an abrupt halt to the season. Uh, unfortunate halt to a great season for the Lady Bears. Uh, what, what's been your mindset uh, since then? Well, you know, it was it was heartbreaking and very unfortunate. And I think, you know, we weren't the only team in the country that felt that. Pretty much every team felt that. Um, but, you know, just pertaining to us, it just sucked for, you know, our seniors. Um, it just sucked. You know, we, we played the whole year to position ourselves to, you know, be successful in March. And, um, you know, just having that kind of ripped from us and just taken away after just such a great season was hard. You know, it was hard to deal with. And there wasn't a lot of closure. So 
I know our players struggled with that, um, our seniors especially. Uh, but, you know, it also makes them hungry, you know, and our, our players do well when we're hungry. So, you know, I think when we can actually get back on campus, you know, hopefully in the summer, but if it's not till the fall, whenever, I think that we're going to see some hungry kids that just want to get back in rhythm and get, you know, get back to uh, the grind and also start, uh, I guess, position ourselves next season to finish what we didn't get to finish this season. So, you know, right now, my biggest thing is I'm not even worried about next season yet. I mean, it's a, you know, it's a ways away. We can't even, we can't work with our kids. So it's not like you can really prepare, uh, physically prepare, you know, your, your team. I just want to work on, you know, just mental, mental parts of the game and things that they can continue to work on. Um, you know, just being better on and off the court, you know, just kind of review the year. And then also just work on our relationships. I mean, um, you know, just continue to be a mentor, but also continue to build and cultivate relationships with my staff and, and our players is huge because, you know, that's all we really have right now. We just have, you know, uh, communication via telephone or, you know, video chat or whatever it is. And so that gives you an opportunity to talk more and just continue to cultivate those relationships. So I think our relationships are good as they are, but, you know, I think you can always get closer. And so that's what I really want to focus on during this time. You had mentioned uh, classes are back in session. Uh, explain that and, and how you're able to monitor the uh, student athletes these days. Well, you know, first of all, we have a great academic advisor, Dan Raines. He does, he, I mean, he's, he's awesome. And he does uh, so much for our players and our program. And we just, you know, I don't think he gets the credit that he deserves. Uh, but he does a great job of just communicating to us and, you know, to our players and just needs and, and, um, you know, being a liaison to the professors and all that stuff. So he does the bulk of it. I mean, this is his kind of his animal he's dealing with. But as, as far as coaches, we have academic teams. Um, and so we're just checking on prospective, you know, players in our academic teams. And then, you know, me, I just try to check on all of them, really. Uh, you know, you just got to you just got to stay on top of it. I mean, really, they just have to continue to check their emails, communicate with their professors, you know, log on when they're supposed to log on. Um, again, it's their new normal. It's a little different. You got kids that, you know, are used to having labs and other things where they have to physically be present and do and, you know, perform different activities. So, you know, all of that's changed or postponed. So I just think, you know, it, it's, it's kind of hard. And when, especially when you're in a routine of actually going to class and, you know, how, how they usually live their everyday lives. But at the end of the day, everybody's in this boat, you know, pretty much every school in the, in the country. So, I just think everybody has to be able just to adapt and roll with the punches. Once again, today's broadcast being brought to you by Bears Elite Partner, Great Southern Bank. Also, a special thank you to Bambino's Cafe. Great food, great service, your neighborhood. Order Bambino's to go at bambinoscafe.com. Well, Coach, congratulations in order for you. I know you hate when we bring up these special honors, but uh, the WBCA um, awarded you this week the Maggie Dixon Rookie Coach of the Year. Congratulations uh, to you on that. I appreciate that, you know, and, and that, was, that was a tremendous honor. I mean, they all have been amazing throughout the course of the year, but, you know, that one to be recognized nationally, you know, um, was just truly humbling and just I was just so thankful and grateful. Um, obviously, I always give all the honor and glory to God. Um, he's first in my life. And the reason why I'm able to do the things I'm doing and continue to try and impact lives. Um, but at the same time, my staff, my players, uh, you know, my players are just, you know, I, I can't thank them enough because they're the ones that actually really, really bought in and had to perform everything that, you know, I wanted us to do or I was trying to get us to do on the court and off the court. So I just, they get so much credit from me. Um, I just think they're good kids and, you know, obviously we had our days where there was adversity and we had our ups and downs, but at the end of the day, we stayed together. We stayed as a family and we continue to fight. And I just really appreciate them and my staff, you know, my staff is very hardworking and, you know, they're an extension of me and I do appreciate them as well. Um, and then, you know, our administration, the support from our administration is just tremendous. I mean, we get, we get a lot, you know, at this level and, um, you know, resources, financially, whatever it is, there's a lot allocated towards women's basketball and, you know, I just truly appreciate their support and just continue to push us to be to be great. Um, and then our, you know, our fans and boosters and donors and all of all everybody, Lady Bear Nation that follows us. And uh, I just I thank them because they made it a very uh, difficult, tough place to play in the queue. You know, and that's a testament to just, you know, our fan base. 
um, you know, we were able to go undefeated at home and they're a big reason why, you know, and then also just the support when they travel on the road or they watch our games and tweet about it and things like that. So we just have a lot of good things happening here. Um, you know, the history and tradition has always been rich, but just what, you know, the buzz, I guess, about our program right now just continues to fuel my fire and our players fire to just continue to try and be great. That, of course, the National Coach Award. You also won the Valley Coach of the Year, just the second first-year head coach to win that award. Um, and that's in the eighth best conference in America. I mean, that says something about what you did with the team this year in conference. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. And again, I, you know, same, same, I guess, kind of speech. You know, I just want to thank everybody else that was, you know, involved. And I just, I, uh, you know, it, it, it's, when that one came about, I was shocked, honestly. I, I didn't think I was going to get it. And everybody's like, why didn't you think that? You guys won the conference and your record and all this. And I, I don't know why. I just, it shocked me. Maybe I didn't think that, you know, our, uh, you know, fellow coaches maybe would have been, you know, maybe they thought I was my, it was my first year and she shouldn't get it yet. I don't, I don't know. I just wasn't expecting it. And so um, I was just so surprised and so thankful for that award. And then I ended up getting the Maggie Dixon one. And that was just like, wow. So, you know, outside looking in, there's a lot of people like, why didn't you, why didn't you know you were going to get that? I'm like, honestly, I didn't know. I thought there was other people that could, you know, that deserved it. So um, again, I'm just super thankful. I'm just humble about it. And I just want to keep getting better and better, you know, Next year, you know, we got to continue to work. I mean, we set the bar pretty high, you know. Yeah. The bar is way up there in the sky. So, you know, we just got to keep this thing going. So I just want to stay humble and hungry and continue to grind now and then hopefully shine later. I'm sure a big reason uh, you were the first first-year coach to win the league outright in the Valley. This is not the first or second year of the Valley. This has been around a long time. So to win it as the only first-year head coach to win the league – says a lot about you and your staff. Speaking of your staff, Coach, we got to ask you, just yesterday, I, I look online and see that uh, Seth Minter is, has resigned and he's going into uh, going back home to Macomb, Illinois. I know we wish him the best of luck, but want to get your thoughts on Seth and what he meant to you your first year here. Yeah, Seth is a great guy, you know, and you just got to respect – uh, those kind of decisions. I mean, he made a decision for his family. Um, you know, he just doesn't want to travel. Uh, you know, that's a big part of what we do, whether it's for recruiting or games. And, you know, he'd rather be at home every night and just have a little bit more uh, consistent, you know, lifestyle and I guess continuity at home and just be able to tuck his kids in at night. And, you know, that stuff just started to wear on him. And it wasn't just this year. He told me he's been struggling with it for about four years or so. And, you know, he just wanted to make a career and life change. And so, of course, I hate to see him go. Seth is a great guy. He's a God-fearing man. He was a great mentor to our players, great father, great husband, you know, great great coach. And um, he, he'll definitely be a friend of mine forever. And, you know, our kids were close. Our families were close. Uh, so we'll definitely miss him. But, you know, I wish him well. And I think that it's a great decision that he made. Um, he was able to, I guess, sell his house here quickly and, you know, especially during this pandemic. And I just think that when you do things the right way, uh, things work out and everything is seen the, it seems to be falling in place with him and his new career path and all that. So I wish him well, you know, and I think, uh, you know, our kids, obviously they were hurt a little bit, not hurt because he was not mad at him or anything, just hurt because they'll miss him. Um, but at the same time, they wished him well and they understood, um, you know, and it wasn't like he was leaving to go to another school. It was, he was leaving to make a family and life decision. So everybody supported him in it. And we wish him well, and I know he'll be around. You know, he'll come to games and things like that. In this situation, the way things are now and, and with the quarantine, what's the uh, search going to be like for you? I know that I think there's a hiring freeze. But, um, how do you handle the search for his replacement at this point? Yeah, you know, I mean, I still am doing some interviews, and I have people in mind, and uh, we do have a hiring freeze, which is unfortunate. Um, we'll be able to probably push one through. Um, but the other one we'll have to wait because I actually have two to fill because um, I had to part ways with Coach Q earlier too, and that one isn't all the way um, out there, but, you know, I had to make some decisions there and part ways, so um, it'll probably be out there now, but I don't, I don't mind. I mean, I've already, you know, I already know who I'm going to fill that position with, and with Seth's position, um, we'll probably have to wait a little bit longer because of the hiring freeze. Special thank you to today's broadcast sponsor, Great Southern Bank, also Missouri State Bookstore. 
Shop online at MissouriStateBookstore.com for all your bearware needs. Well, senior players, we didn't get a chance to really honor a couple of uh, great uh, individuals that you inherited this year, Coach, uh, Alexa and Shamika. And boy, uh, what, a, what a great pair to have to take over a program with. I mean, good leaders, good players, just good people. Really, really good people. Um, great people. I, I just think that, you know, they, they are just on and off the court. They're, they're great and they're different. Um, I've talked about both of them a lot, but, you know, um, Shamika, she, she, I think she wants to go to grad school and that's going to be what she's trying to move forward with. Um, but she was just somebody who, you know, played a role all year, worked, worked her butt off to get back from her, her knee injury and just, you know, was a positive light, never complained about playing time, just did what she could. And she actually helped us, you know, win some games and was, and was, um, you know, a big part of our success. You know, it's not always about the person that plays 30 minutes and whatever. It's about the person that makes the most of their minutes. And she did that. I mean, she had some really big shots. She had some good re key rebounds and block shots at different times. Um, so I really appreciate her and then just her personality and getting to know her as a kid. I mean, she's a really good person, fun, you know, has some hidden talents as well. Um, but I think that she's going to be a huge contributor just in our society. I think she has a bright future. Um, same thing with Willie. I mean, Willie was, Willie was tremendous all year. Obviously I've talked about it so much and how hard she worked and, you know, she was just so sick about not being able to play in the conference tournament and the NCAA tournament um, because she just, she just works so hard at it. You know, I mean, she's literally like the hardest working kid I think I've ever coached. And I, I just want her to continue that work ethic because I think that she has, she has a long future playing professionally. And so that's what we're trying to do now. I mean, it's hard because a lot of the combines and all that stuff was canceled because it all, it all happens at the final four. And that's where she would have got some of that exposure. And she would also had some exposure in the NCAA tournament, but you know, now it's just about getting her with the right people and aligning her in a, um, in a way where she can be successful um, overseas. And then even hopefully, you know, maybe get a sh chance at the WNBA in the near future. So I do think she's a super talented kid um, and just, just a great kid, a very selfless kid, a very bubbly, positive kid. Um, I'm definitely going to miss them both, you know, and I just want to do what I can to help them fulfill their dreams, whether it's grad school, playing professionally, whatever they want to do. Talking about Alexa, I was very disappointed. I'll get your thoughts on kind of the lack of postseason awards for her and honors. She did get the uh, all-conference first team in the Valley, but um, didn't see much uh, postseason All-American type stuff, which I think she deserved. She was such a big part of this team's success, and yet you see some other mid-major players being honored, but not Alexa. Wanted to get your thoughts on that and what maybe you thought about her career, and especially this year playing like a senior. Yeah, I mean, I thought she had a great career. She's helped break some records. She's broken some individual records, but she's also helped us break some records, um, uh, and especially just this year. But, yeah, I mean, I think there was times this year where she did get a lot of national recognition, and there was times where she didn't. Um, I just think uh, – you know, it's unfortunate that she, she wasn't mentioned in some of those talks, but I also think that, you know, postseason or just March season would have helped her. You know, I think that she was ready and focused to do well um, in our conference tournament and then beyond in the NCAA tournament. I just think that the level of focus I saw with her and just where she was mentally, I think she would have, you know, had a tremendous impact on our team in, in the end of our season, our postseason, but also, um, you know, on the country. I think that she would have been, more widely recognized but at the same time it is what it is and I think that she knows that she had a great career and and she knows that you know she's a great player and she put in the work and got a lot of the things that she deserved and I think she's just going to carry that on to her professional career. Today's broadcast sponsor is Bears Elite Partner, Great Southern Bank. We'd also like to thank Hotel Vandevort, Springfield's first urban boutique hotel. We have a fan question coming up, Coach, but wanted to ask you about uh, this summer now with the, the team. Again, you'd mentioned it, um, not able to kind of um, be in contact personally with the players. How are they handling summer workouts, and what are you asking them to do right now to kind of – improve as basketball players this is a key point for them yeah you know where there's so much legislation going back and forth with the NCAA um, first it was permissible to do workouts and it wasn't permissible it's kind of been up in the air with a lot of things so you know right now you know we just everything is voluntary with the workouts they're doing obviously um, 
you know, you can't physically do anything with them, but, you know, they have, they have uh, exercises that they can do on their own if, you know, voluntarily. And I think that they are doing them. Um, I just believe in also giving, I told them from the beginning, at the end of the season, I was going to give them a month off. I just really do believe in that, like just getting mentally and physically rejuvenated, um, getting some rest, you know, you, you take a lot of, your body takes a lot, you know, there's a lot of pounding um, on you physically and mentally, you know, so just to just get away and now typically that's not getting away and being isolated in your actual home. <laughs> you know, usually it's just kind of relaxing, being with friends and family and being able to move about. But I mean, the thing is they're at home and they're getting bored and people feel like they're getting out of shape. So they're obviously working out on their own. Um, but we can't, we won't really be able to do any basketball specific things with them until, you know, we get the clearance from NCA and Missouri state, everybody to get back on campus and, the pandemic's over and, uh, you know, we can get back to physically working with them. So I think that, you know, there are going to, there are going to be people that are out of shape, you know, all over the country. I think our players are going to be somewhat out of shape. You know, I do think that they're motivated and they're doing some work on their own and exercises and lifting and, you know, things that they can do, body weight circuits, things like that. But at the end of the day, when we get back together physically, I know that there's going to be, you know, some work to be done, especially because not everybody has a basketball hoop and not everybody has a chance to go somewhere and play. And a lot of local parks and things like that are, are closed, you know, because of this pandemic. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of missed shots and a lot of dribbling off your feet and all that stuff, you know, a little rust we need to get off of. But I think everybody in the country is going to be in that situation. I know uh, you talked about being busy looking for uh, a couple of assistant coaches right now. Are you able to work on uh, schedules and anything for next year? Um, I know you had a couple games you were still trying to schedule as of a couple months ago. Yeah, um, we have a bunch of games that we're trying to schedule. Um, you know, that was something that we needed to finish up. And so now I'm just heading that on myself. And we have seemed to be um, – moving in the right direction. I hope to have the schedule done probably here in about a week or two at tops because I think we got some things filled and it's going to be a competitive schedule. Um, I think it's important to continue to push our team in the non-conference and, and just, uh, you know, get ourselves prepared for conference play. I mean, our conference is, is going to be tough and, um, you know, we want to be able to make a run and hopefully go back to back, you know, and win our conference again and then obviously be able to have a chance to perform in March. So I, I just think that we have to, uh, we have to continue to schedule tough or schedule up, I guess you could say, and just continue to challenge ourselves. Coach, we have a, a question from a fan, which is uh, new. This is brought to you by Great Corner, Great Corner Screen Printing and Embroidery, your partner for great looking t-shirts on time, every time, the Great Corner, more than just a great t-shirt and Missouri State Athletics official screen printing partner. Rhonda asks, Coach, a question for you. Who do you consider to be a great mentor to you during your first season as head coach? That's a great question. Who is your mentor, uh, not only this year, but in your career? Um, you know, I have a few of them. But, you know, this year, I guess you could say my career, uh, my high school coach is one. He's a longtime, you know, high school coach in uh, Vienna, Virginia, where I went to high school, Oakton High School. Fred Priester, um, you know, I always, from the time I was a kid, I've looked up to him and, uh, in many ways. He was like a father figure at times, you know, but he was um, a mentor. He's my coach. So, um, and he knows the game and just knows how to relate to people and, and kids and everything. So ever since I was younger, he's definitely somebody that I was that I looked up to. Um, but then also, you know, my college coach, Felicia Leggett Jack, uh, she coached me in college at Hofstra and then I worked for her at Indiana university and then now she's at buffalo um and she's doing some great things there i mean they went to the sweet 16 a few years ago and um she's doing a lot of great things but she's somebody that i definitely um consider a mentor and then um one of my really really good friends too that i i worked with her when we initially met well we met before that but when we became close we worked together at indiana um years ago uh, but Katie Abrahamson Henderson, who Coach Abe was actually a coach here at Missouri State, ironically. Um, but she's not just a good friend of mine, um, was in my wedding and all that. Um, but she's also somebody that I respect and think is, you know, a good coach. So she, she, would, she would be another one. But there's, there's others, but I would say, you know, those three probably come to my mind first. 
Got a c picture of Coach Abe and myself on my wall right uh, to my right here. So uh, she's a good friend of mine, too, and uh, that makes my heart feel good. Coach, what about your recruits for next year? Are you keeping in touch with them? You got a couple already signed. And then Abby Jackson, of course, came aboard uh, during the season this year, able to communicate with them. And how excited are they to come aboard? Yeah, the recruits are super excited. The ones that we have coming in, Danny and Paige, uh, both of them are praying and hoping that they can still come in, you know, June or whatever it is, or I think the end of June that they usually come, uh, which I don't know. That's up in the air. We don't know if we're going to be allowed on campus yet, um, but hopefully we will. And hopefully they can come and get, you know, that head start like every other freshman gets every year. So they're super excited. Um, you know, rec recruiting is going really well. You know, we want to get a couple more in the 21 class. Um, but that's pretty much what you can do right now, you know, because like camps that we cancel camps because we just don't know what, you know, you can't really plan for camps right now because we don't know what the situation is going to be in the summertime. Um, so there's no camps, but like scheduling is a big thing right now. Recruiting is a big thing. Um, just keeping in touch with, you know, future recruits and just continue to try to recruit them, you know, because <laughs> you're still trying to get them. You just can't, you know, typically this is a time where March you could do uh, home visits and then April, in May, you got the spring evaluations where you go out and actually watch them play in AAU tournaments, and all that's been canceled. So the only thing you can really do is, you know, video chat, talk on the phone, text, just, you know, find creative ways to keep them engaged and keep them excited about your school and your program. So recruiting is a big part of what we're doing right now. Um, obviously, I need to hire two coaches and then um, scheduling and then just really, you know, making sure I keep in touch with our players and build those relationships. Finally, Coach, uh, family doing okay? Billy and Eze uh, both uh, handling the quarantine okay? Yeah, they are. I mean, Eze's, uh, he's running around right now. I can hear him go, <laughs> Mama, 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 he's trying to find me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been good. I mean, it's been great, you know, just spending time with my two guys. I, I, I love it. I love the, that part of what's going on now. Obviously, unfortunate circumstances because of what's going on in the country, but I love being able to not have to travel right now and get to spend some family time. Um, April's a big month for us because Billy's birthday is April 3rd, mine's April 13th, and Eze's is April 30th. So it's our birthday month, so we get to be together. Um, and just, you know, it's, it's difficult too, but when I'm trying to, you know, talk to recruits or do Zoom meetings with our staff or whatever it is, because sometimes Eze, you know, will come and he's jumping all over me. But, you know, that's part of it. You know, and I have him talk to recruits, too, because he's, he's a good one. <laughs> he, he can uh, get their attention pretty quickly. But, now I love being home, and I just think that, you know, you got to stay positive through to, uh, trying times like this and, and just try and find the silver lining. Coach, I've enjoyed it. Uh, nice to speak with you again. It's been a while, been three weeks and an abrupt end of the season, but I've enjoyed this. What are we wearing tomorrow? What shirts are we wearing tomorrow? I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> this yeah. is pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, wow, as soon as I saw you. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we're still on the same page. Yes, we are. Coach, thanks a lot. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. You take care. Stay healthy, all right? You too. That's been Inside the Cave, presented by Bears Elite Partner, Great Southern Bank. Great Southern Bank, the bank that backs the bears.